travel with camps going on this summer and others around. So uh, please uh, be sure to join us for summer camp, uh, excuse me, for prayer meeting for summer camps uh, this coming Wednesday night. Remember to study your Bible, read your Bible, memorize your Bible. We're not asking you to memorize all of it on one day, but memorize your Bible. And uh, so that uh, thy word have I hid in my heart that I will not sin against thee. Amen. Psalm 119, 11, the very first verse that we memorized together. Well, choir, thank you for assembling and singing. Uh, the text this morning fits so well with like the woman at the well I was seeking for things that did not satisfy. Do you have your Bibles? Turn to John chapter 4. John chapter 4. And I want us to walk through this. I have two points. Let me give you the points and then you're free to think whatever you want to think. You're interested. No, no, no. We'll stay together, okay? But as Jesus really set a great model for witnessing and sharing the gospel. And I think it's can be boiled down to two things. One is don't argue. Amen. When you're sharing Jesus, he's the best thing that you've ever met or ever will be. Amen. So don't argue about him. Amen. The other thing is talk. Because as you talk, they talk. And I want you to hear God talk to us this morning in John chapter 4. Um, I want to start with maybe verse 4. Okay? Verse 4 and I'll, I'll make some highlights as we go, but I want to make sure we get the gist of what he's talking about here when he says, now, he had to go through Samaria. Well, we can just spend the day right there. But Jesus had been, if you remember, he was talking to Nicodemus earlier in chapter 3, I believe it was. And now he's come here, and he's headed up to, uh, from Judea, uh, northward. And between his, where he is and his destination is this whole community called Samaria. Yeah, right. And this Samaritan place, they're known sort of as half-breeds, if you want to use that terminology, right. because they were, a, when the Jews intermarried with other people, then they were not pure Jewish nation anymore. So they were considered half -breeds. so much so that they were even considered outcasts. And as outcasts, many of the Jews would say, if I have to go to, from Israel down to Judea, then I don't want to take a chance on being made ceremonially unclean. So they would cross the, the Jordan River, go up the east, east side, and then cross back over once they're past Samaria. And it made sense that, he, that uh, John would include in here that little piece of a verse that says he had to go through Samaria. Right. Amen. You see, Jesus has purpose in his life, yes. and that purpose could not have been accomplished had he gone around Samaria. Amen, brother. And you'll see what's happening here in just a moment. So he came to a town in Samaria called Sychar, near the plot of ground Jacob had given to his son Joseph. And Jacob's well was there. And Jesus, tired from his journey, sat down by the well, and it was about noon. It says the sixth hour. And in their Jewish timetable, that would some, be somewhere around noon. Well, he's tired. He's exhausted. He's waiting. And in verse 7, it says, A Samaritan woman came to draw water. Stop there a second. What's her name? Samaritan woman. Samaritan woman. Insignificant for us to know. Now, if we go back to chapter 3, we know that he talked to Nicodemus. He named him. Yes. This is Nicodemus. This is Samaritan woman. Okay? This, by the way, is male. This is female. This, and by not only female, but she was not Jewish. Strike one, strike two, strike three. And you know, many times we want to make our witnessing opportunities about race. Tell it. And you're going to see that she tried to do that, but Jesus was, was going to pay attention to that. 
So uh, verse 7, when a Samaritan woman came to draw water, Jesus said to her, will you give me a drink? You see, he sees the opportunity. She had water. She had the equipment to get the water out of the well. Jesus obviously did not have a jar or anything to drop into Jacob's well. So she, he just called on her. Will you give me something to drink? You and I can look in everyday opportunities and just ask for a favor. Right? A bulb went out on my vehicle and I stopped in at AutoZone. I'm not advertising, I'm just saying that's the location that I was, was AutoZone. Largely because I knew that they would come put it in for me. Okay? And uh, the gentleman was there, he put it in, and uh, he had this big baritone voice that anybody, it sounded like he swallowed a sound system. Okay? I mean, it was just really good. And I said, do you sing? With a voice like that, no. <laughs> well, that didn't go too well. And uh, he checked the light bulb and he said, it's not the one you thought it was. So reluctantly, he went back in and got the correct bulb. It was high beam still low. I don't know what it was, but it was the wrong one. And I tried and tried and tried. But the only thing he was willing to talk about was light bulbs. So what did we talk about? Light bulbs. Did you know that Jesus is the light of the world and it doesn't have to be replaced. It would be, Jesus would put AutoZone out of business, right? And so there you go. You can find ways that whatever they're talking about, you can talk. You see, you don't argue. You ought to be a singer. Listen to your voice. And I could have argued with him all day long. And he, you know what he's done? Go and sold me a light bulb, right? But we need to learn not to argue, but to talk. Amen. And talk about things that they can understand, things that they would, would agree to uh, talk with you about. But Jesus said, give me a drink. His disciples had gone, and this is parenthetically, his disciples had gone back in the side car to buy some food. Okay, now look at verse 9. The Samaritan woman said to him, you are a Jew. You see the race car she's pulling? Oh, yeah. And I'm a Samaritan. Woman. You see the race card again? Mm -hmm. Or gender card if you want to. But she, Jesus refused to argue with her about Jew and Samaritan. Right. He refused to argue about male and female. Amen. How can you ask me for a drink of water? Don't you know the tradition? That we don't talk to you. You're Jewish. I'm Samaritan. I'm a woman. You're a male out here in the middle of the desert, okay, uh, at a well, we just don't talk to each other like that. For Jews do not associate with the Samaritan. Now look at verse 10. Jesus answered her, I like this. If you, if you write in your Bible or make notes, here's a good note to take. If you knew, do you know Jesus? Amen. If you know Jesus, things will be different. Yes, sir. When we come face to face with Jesus, we can never leave the same. We Amen. will either come to know him or we will come to reject him. But you can't be face to face with Jesus and walk away the same. Right. If you knew the gift of God, notice this. It's not something you have to earn. It is what? A gift yeah. of Amen. God. And he says, if you knew the gift of God and who it is that asked you for a drink, you would have ask him and he would have given you living water if you knew you would have asked right i meet people frequently and you do too that do not know jesus do not know anything about him i'm meeting people in the united states and in tennessee of all places that have never heard the word or name jesus right. apart from profanity God right. Help us. right brother and whose fault is that? Theirs or ours? You know, we are to be proclaimers of the gospel of Christ. And if we're going to proclaim him, and a person in our county 
and our city has never heard the name of Jesus as a person who offers salvation and redemption through the shed blood of Jesus Christ and the risen Lord, then shame on us, right. not on them. But we treat them like Samaritans. Tell it. Like, if you don't know Jesus, you can't be around me. Tell it, preach, brother. There's something wrong. Amen. And it's not with them. It's with us. Amen, brother. Listen to what he said. If you knew, you would have asked. But now that you don't know, I'm going to give you a reason to ask. Follow me in verse, uh, I think that's 11. Okay? The subscripts are really small. <laughs> okay. Sir, the woman said, you have nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. Where can you get this living water? Are you greater than our father Jacob, who gave us the well and drank from it himself? as did also his sons and his flock. She took the very words that he had used earlier and reversed the order, but exactly the same kind of thing. She's asking questions. You see, he gave her enough rope that she could walk the tightrope of saying, I don't know this, I don't know this, and I don't know this. But you know what? It sounds like you don't know it either. Because if you knew about David, if you knew about excuse me, uh, Jacob, and if you knew about Jacob, and if you knew about this well, then you would know that I've been drinking here a lot of times. Oh, might I add, by myself? Because you see, when you go to Jacob's well, frequently, almost always, you would go early in the morning before the heat of the day. It's hot. Right. It's hot. You can try it. <laughs> okay. It's hot. But because of who she was, and maybe even a questionable right. character, right. she chose to go in the heat of the day, in the middle of the day, when nobody else would be there. Right. Right. Not early morning, not late afternoon, but when I could be alone. Because you see, I'm that Samaritan. And when the Jews come, they don't want me around. Look at verse 13. Jesus answered, everyone. Amen. Can we camp out there a minute? Most of the people, just the Jews, no. just those Southern Baptists, no. heaven forbid. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Everyone who drinks this water will be thirsty again. Yeah. Jacob's well is a, is a well that has good water that is temporary fix for you. You're right. gonna have to come back to that well. But whoever drinks the water I give him will never thirst. That is a bold claim, is it not? Yes. If you have never drank of the well of living water that Jesus has offered you, you will be very reluctant to make that claim to anyone else. Right. Jesus can 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 give you can quench your thirst of the things that you desire the most. But we just got through singing. I don't have the text in front of me. Like the woman at the well, I was seeking things that what? Do not satisfy. satisfy. Right. And so much of the time, we don't drink of the living water. We drink of a, an imaginary, imaginary water that we think might be living, and that is saying, I'm not sure about your faith. If you cannot believe that Jesus Christ will quench your thirst, let's go on with what he said. Whoever drinks this water, I will give him, will never thirst, and the water I give him will become not about him, but in him. Yes a spring of water welling up to eternal life. See, a spring of living water is not something you do. It's something that you are. And God puts that well of living water inside of you. Amen. And out of that comes your deeds. We're going to talk a little bit about what we did last week, to work out your salvation in Philippians on Sunday night. Hey, don't miss Sunday night, okay? A little quick advertisement there. Let's keep moving, okay? Uh, but in him, the spring of water welling up to what? 
so he won't have to thirst again, so she won't have to come out with her bucket to Jacob's well. That's not what the point. The point is that if you allow me to come inside of you, refresh you, save you, then it will result in you having eternal life. Amen. Eternal life. You see, it's not about work, of her not having to work anymore. It's about her having an eternal home. The woman said, sir, I want this water. That sounds good. Because, so that I won't have to get thirsty and have to come here again. She missed the point, did she not? No. Do you think she missed the point? And he told her, go call your husband and come back. See, oh, Jesus oh. is just talking. Hey, go get your husband. Let's talk it over with him, too. I have no husband, she replied. And Jesus said, you're right. You don't have a husband. You've been married. Uh, the fact is that you have five husbands, and the man you now have is not your husband. What you have just said is quite true. Notice this. He didn't say, well, you've had five husbands, and don't go, get out of here and leave your bucket. No. He says, what you said is true. Right, he complimented her for telling the truth. You know yeah. what? Sometimes you and I, if we're not careful, when we're looking to share the gospel with another person, and they come up with that sin that is so alarming, you go, <gasps> and that tells them, oh, I am so bad, I can't be saved. Can I point to all of us and say, you were that Amen. bad too? Amen. You know, I don't care. I, I've never smoked. Well, I did once. You know, like, back in the day, you had these little cigarettes in a candy packet, and they were nothing but sugar sticks. Mother gave me a nickel, and I went in the store, and I got a pack of those. And I was in the back of the truck. <laughs> we don't have seatbelts in those things, right? But it didn't matter. Uh, we just kept the population low <laughs> by being dangerous. But we got those little cigarettes, and Mother apparently looked in the rearview mirror, and she stopped that truck. Because, you see, I had one of those candy sticks out, and I was pretending to smoke. <laughs> That'll, that'll, that'll make you never, ever want to smoke in your life, okay? So, Tina, you try that and see what happens uh, with mom and dad. Uh, that's as close to smoking as I've ever done. See, we want to we categorize sin. And your sin is no less great than her sin. Right. We want to we pick on one sin you know, I, I, I'd rather look at you and your sin than me and my sin. And I'd rather talk about you and your sin instead of me and my sin. And, and she said, I don't think, you know, and she said to him, and let's look at verse 19. Sir, the woman said, I see that you're a prophet. And sir, I'm, I'm going to add something here, okay? And sir, I'm just about to change the subject, right? Because I don't like talking about my sin. <laughs> Our fathers worshipped on this mountain. That's Mount Gerizim. But Jews claim that the place where you're to worship is in Jerusalem, Mount Zion. Now, we have a conflict here. Let's argue for you a few minutes because it'll get your mind off of my husband's. You see what I'm saying? And when we're talking to people who do not know Jesus, they would much rather divert our attention to other things. Stay on course. What is he offering her? Living water. And she's just trying to divert the attention. Verse 21, Jesus declared, believe me, a time is coming when you will worship the Father neither in Gerizim nor in Zion. You Samaritans worship what you do not know. Well, oh, what did he say? You worship only the law, the first five books, if and when you do worship. But we worship what we do know, for salvation is from the Jews. Yet a time is coming and has now come. Right. You know, the time has come for her right then, right? right? That when true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth, for they are the kind of worshipers the Father seeks. Right. We are to worship him in spirit and in truth. Earlier he says, if you knew, 
She didn't know the truth, right? If you knew, you would ask. She doesn't even have the right questions to ask. But if you knew, God is spirit, it says, and his worshipers must worship in spirit and in truth. And look at verse 25, and the woman said, this is, he said, she said, he said, she said, right? So look at verse 25, the woman said, I know that Messiah, called Christ, is coming. Yes. And when he comes, he will explain everything to us. <clears throat> I'm too embarrassed to ask, was a, a bit of what she was saying. And then Jesus said, I who speak to you am he. Amen. And when you meet Jesus face to face, I want to go just a little bit further because you see the disciples came back and they didn't even talk about food. They didn't even greet her. She walked out. She left her water jar there. What did she come there for? Water. water. What did she leave without? Without, water. without that water, but she left with living water. Amen. And she went, and, it's, and the scripture says that she went back into town. And who did she tell? All their husbands, I guess. Men, right. See, Samaritan women don't talk to men. But yet when Jesus, you have an encounter with Jesus, it says that she went back into town and she told, told the men of the town that she had met the Messiah. Yeah, praise the Lord. See, when you meet Jesus, you don't notice male and female. Right. You don't notice <clears throat> Jew, Samaritan, Greek, Gentile, right. whatever. You notice Jesus. And she got a good dose of Jesus yeah. there at the well. And she hurried back into town and told the men. And they came out. And it says the men came out and they met Jesus and some were saved. And Jesus, they asked him to come into town. Jesus went into town. As he went in, he was encouraged to stay there. And he did for a while. And he shared living water with them. The word of God. The truth of God Amen. with them. And guess what happened? Read it. The whole, not some of them, the whole town was saved. Amen. Not everybody except the bootlegger. Not everybody except the deacons. Um, excuse me. I don't, don't want to go there. Uh, you understand what I'm saying? He didn't leave anybody out. It says that everybody was saved. Everybody came to faith in Jesus Christ in that town. Because what? Because one person who had not been to seminary, had never been to Bible school, never came to your Sunday school class, never came to your worship service, but she met Jesus. Amen. Amen. And she was willing to Amen. share Amen. Jesus with everybody, men and women. She went to the men, and I, I wonder sometimes why she didn't go to the women, but I think uh, this is my thinking. Yeah, right. Is these are the very women that caused her to go to the well at noon to begin with. Right. The criticism, they the gossip, right. the slander, the the meanness about it. And you know, if you and I are not careful, we will leave for us a reputation of being mean yes. to unbelievers. Tell it. And Jesus says, "You're an unbeliever. <clears throat> I know your sin." All of them. But let me just point out one, the husband issue. The worship issue. Let me just point those out to you. But you know what? I love you to the point that a few chapters later, I'm going to go to Calvary yes. and shed my blood. Just God bless you. You may feel like the Samaritan woman. You may be thinking in your heart, like you dressed up and you signed the best, I got that, okay? But you may think in your heart, if, and I'm not the prophet, nor a son of a prophet, okay? But you may think in your heart, if he only knew how I feel right now, that I feel rejected. We say nice things, we hug each other, 
We take temperatures and we hug each other. <laughs> I'm kidding. Uh, we do the right things, but I can sit in a crowd like this and I can feel so alone. I've been there. I may look like I fit in, but I feel so lonely. And Jesus says, let me give you living water. To Amen. Drink. Come to me. If you're thirsty, come and I'll give you living water. It may be that you've seen folks that need the living water and you walk, you walk by them glancing over at their parched lip and their dry heart that needs refreshment. And we walk by rejecting them in the name of Jesus because they know you're a believer. And if we reject them, we're rejecting in Jesus' name. If we share with them, we're sharing in Jesus' name. But when I become Christian, little Christ, then everything I do is a reflection of him. Yes, sir. So my question is, we've come face to face with Jesus. Through a story, through a true story, but we've come face to face with Amen. Jesus today. He's in this place. Amen. Amen. What are you going to do with him? Are you going to be like the woman at the well, make some excuses, and hurry out before Jesus gets a hold of your life? Or are you willing to surrender and say, Lord, I want that living water. Amen. I want your redemption for my soul so that it will well up to eternal life. What about you this morning? It may be that some of you have picked up a little prayer card and they're out here on the prayer wall and you need, you need to pray for and witness to your number one, the person you most want to see come to faith in Jesus Christ, but you just haven't done it. Now's the time for you to man up, to woman up and say, I'm going to do it. Amen. Not because of, out of my power, not out of my strength, not out of guilt, but out of my compassion for a lost person who is dying and going to hell, and you can make a difference by presenting the gospel to them. So the question is on the floor. What will you do with Jesus? If you've never trusted Jesus before, he will accept you just as you are. Why don't we sing that song? Just as I am without one plea, but that thy blood was shed for me. O Lamb of God, I come. If you have never received Jesus into your life, would you please come and we, we will make a lot of talk here. We'll talk later, but at least give an invitation. It may be that on your bulletin, you're going to write, come see me. I want to talk about Jesus. Sign your name. Give me a phone number. I'll get with you in the week. We'll find a way for you to understand because if you do, you would ask. We want to help you know the questions to ask and give you the answers that come from God's Word. If you want to stand, stand just as I am without one. Let's sing. Would you come?